Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Mattel Ghostbusters 2016 6 inch scale figures. We're looking at all four of the Ghostbusters today including Abby Yates, Aaron Gilbert, Jillian Holtzman, and Patty Tolan. Mattel has also introduced the Build-A-Figure concept to this Ghostbusters wave of figures. When you collect all four Ghostbusters, you can build Rowan the Ghost. Now, looking at the packaging here, it's pretty nice. I actually think it's quite vibrant, and I like it. I really like the green slime aesthetic that it has. The tweaked Ghostbusters logo is quite nice. Very similar to what it was before, but a little different. It says Ghostbusters on the right side. Gives you a nameplate for the character on the bottom. At the back, you can see that all of these are the same. It says collect all four figures to build a Rowan figure, and you can see here what that looks like. There are all four of the Ghostbusters right there. On the top, it says Ghostbusters with the Ghostbusters logo, and then at the bottom, all of that usual information that you would normally get down there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these ladies unboxed, and when we come back, we will take a closer look and see what they're all like. Okay, and here are the Ghostbusters out of the packaging. Now, I picked these up over the summer. I actually got a really good deal on them. And I actually got them from a couple of different stores. I think between Target, which had them on clearance, and then Toys R Us, which I had some coupons for, um, they all cost around $40 or $45, which uh, is pretty incredible because regular price on these is 20 bucks. So that was really cool. And I've been sitting on them. I wanted to get them reviewed, especially now that Ghostbusters is out on Blu-ray. Just pick this up and I enjoyed the film. I know a lot of people were apprehensive about it before it came out. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was pretty good. The extended edition that we get here in the Blu-ray um, is okay. It doesn't really add a whole lot to the film, but I was watching it and um, you know, there's a, a little bit of extra stuff in there. So if you're into extended editions, that's kind of cool. Um, but looking at the figures here, they're nicely done. Uh, Mattel is very hit and miss when it comes to six inch figures, especially this year when we see the DC multiverse figures, uh, which just aren't that good. At least the film based figures aren't that great. Poor likenesses, outdated articulation. You get similar articulation with these, but it's a little bit better and all the articulation seems to work very well. In addition to that, I think the likenesses on all four of these is quite good, which is pretty surprising since again, the DC figures just aren't that great lately. These actually look like their movie counterparts. You might think that these all share the same parts. Well, they do not. They're actually all completely different, which is awesome because Mattel did go out of their way to provide unique sculpts for each figure from head to toe. But aside from the aesthetics, they're pretty similar overall. We will go ahead and focus first on Dr. Gilbert and give you a close up here of Aaron. I think it looks pretty decent. It's supposed to be Kristen Wiig, and I mean, I think they got the general likeness on her. Uh, of the four Ghostbusters, though, I think this one probably has the overall weakest likeness. Um, it just looks a little bit blank, like she's kind of emotionless, which if she's going around fighting ghosts, um, maybe it's fitting if she's scared, but uh, I don't know. It just seems like kind of a blank stare, like she looks a little concerned. Um, but it, it's pretty decent. You can see that the paint is very clean. Uh, the hair is very nice. It's basically just like an auburn color. No uh, extra highlighting or anything. Very simple. But it gets the job done. Uh, the rest of the outfit, it's got her name on there. It says Gilbert. And uh, you can see that the costume, they did add a little bit of a wash to it. So it's not just like beige. Uh, they actually did incorporate a little bit of highlighting and shadowing in there just to bring about some of that detail. The detail itself, as far as the sculpt goes, is pretty light, but it's just enough for a figure like this, in my opinion. It's there, um, but you know, it is a little on the light side. Now, uh, I do like these stripes that she has on her costume. You get your ghost logo right there. Looks all right, um, but the stripes look really good because they kind of have that sort of reflective quality to them, kind of like a silver sort of a paint. And that looks really good. It, it actually stands out quite a bit uh, in person and I think on camera too. She's also got her belt under there, which uh, looks pretty nice. Pretty nicely done belt. And uh, the boots, pretty simplistic, but you also get that stripe on them. So that's kind of cool. And then for the proton packs, they are removable. So uh, you just pull it out of her hand and I'll show you this on this figure because they're all pretty similar. So if we do this on one figure, we won't need to do it on the others. So just kind of finagle it 
off of there just kind of finesse it a little bit and this is pretty cool that they're removable and from the back that's basically what she looks like and you know this is very smart on Mattel's part um, I don't really like this it's, it's pretty big why does it need to be that big but you know at least if you have the proton pack on there you're not going to see it so I mean I, I respect that I mean I guess they could have hidden it on the leg or something but um, that's where they ended up putting it now as far as the proton pack itself goes it actually looks pretty decent uh, it's got very nice sculpt particularly here on the back side it looks quite a bit as it did in the film it's this really dark kind of galaxy gray color I guess I would call it and it looks pretty good it, I mean it, it's got all the sculpt there that it needs I guess they could have added a little bit more paint to it other than the little lights and stuff that you see there they could have added a little bit more just to make it look a little more metallic or something but uh, to me it looks more or less as it did in the film so that's what's the most important uh, you get the orange straps right here orange and gray straps and those are pretty rubbery you can get those on your shoulders and off quite easily and then they are attached to the neutrino ones so this is pretty similar to what we saw with the 30th anniversary ghostbusters figures that we have reviewed previously and the neutrino ones look pretty decent good amount of detail on them a little bit of extra paint and then uh, you will see that on the proton pack there is a little notch right there and what you're going to do is you are just going to bring it up and then you'll find that little hole right there and uh, just ease it in there like that attaches very easily next up we have abby yates and i'll give you a close-up here of her and it's a pretty decent likeness to melissa mccarthy and i mean i think that it looks pretty good i mean it's like with the other figure it's not perfect but the general idea is there and it's a little bit better still i think than the dc figures we've been seeing maybe not by a long shot but it is a little bit better definitely works for a mattel figure uh, the hair is pretty simplistic it's uh, all one color no highlighting no texturing and she's basically got it back in a ponytail like the dr gilbert figure did and uh, she's got her glasses which are a separate piece that are glued there onto her face she's got some pink lipstick nice skin tone and the rest of the costume says yates and then very similar costume but it is a little bit different like i said all of these have unique sculpted parts for each figure and this is no different and you also get that very nice metallic striping that i really like and even the belt is pretty reflective which is kind of cool boots look pretty nice and as we noted before the proton packs look quite excellent really like what they did there and then we have julian holtzman who is my favorite of the new ghostbusters because kate mckinnon is freaking awesome and of the four figures i actually think that this one has the best overall likeness i mean they really got it down for this figure uh, it just looks excellent it really does and i really like the character design too and uh, it looks quite a bit like egon from the real ghostbusters cartoon which i watched religiously as a little four-year-old or however old i was back when it was out and i just really like this i think it looks fantastic she has glasses and they are attached onto the figure you cannot remove them and they do have those orangey lenses that she had in the film and um you can see her blue eyes through them which is pretty cool she's got pink lipstick uh, nice skin tone and the hair is also really nicely sculpted uh, very simple though you're not going to get any extra coloring but it looks totally adequate as far as the costume go it says holtzman here on her pocket but uh, you can barely see it because her collar is kind of open and covering it um, but the costume itself looks really good and you know again unique parts for each of these figures she's a little more slender and she definitely looks a little more sporty than the other figures which is pretty cool and uh, her sleeves are rolled up which is unique to this figure and although they all have the gloves the hands are unique on all of them so her hands are actually um, probably the smallest out of all of them and the belt looks quite nice uh, again there's a little bit of a wash at least up here in this area it's very faint and it's not too obvious but it is here at least on top uh, you don't really see it as much down at the bottom though so it kind of looks almost like there's a two-tone sort of thing going on here but you can't see that in person i'm not sure why the camera is picking it up it must be that it's actually there and just you know in real life you can't notice it um, but that's interesting uh, boots look pretty good you do get the peg holes on all four of the figures 
and uh, Proton Pack Neutrino Wand look great. Really good looking figure here. And then we have Patty Tolan, who maybe has the second best likeness out of these four figures. Maybe. Um, it's not perfect, but it's it's mostly there. I think they did a, a generally good job with it, especially considering the price point. Uh, I do feel like it's a little bit shiny, a little bit too glossy looking. Uh, it's a little too waxy, and I don't really know why that is, because the other figures don't really have that problem. Uh, maybe it's something with the color. I really don't know, but... Uh, it is noticeably waxy compared to the others. Uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. I like her lipstick. It's a pretty nice pink color. Uh, her hair looks cool. She's got some nice detailing there and um, extra coloring right there, kind of like a maroon sort of color there. <laughs> and the rest of the outfit looks good. It says Tolan right there above her pocket. And um, just a really nice costume overall i think i really like the colors on these that the orange really stands out to me and again that reflectiveness that's painted on there and on the boots looks really good and um you know it is simply detailed for the jumpsuit but it's adequate it gets the job done and the proton packs of course still look great and one thing i don't really like about this figure is the wrists look so skinny i mean it just looks absurdly skinny um, that's really the only big nitpick I have with this figure is that for some reason on Patty, they gave her really thin wrists and that just looks strange. Now, articulation is the same on all four of the figures. So I'm going to go ahead and bring back Dr. Gilbert and we'll just look at the articulation on her as an example since they're all the same. You basically just get a silver at the neck, no ball joint of any sort. Um, I mean, it's enough to make it turn. It would have been nice if it did have a ball joint so you can make it look up and down. Uh, you do get ball jointed shoulders. They're not hindered in any way, which is really nice. You get ball joints at both of the elbows and they move very nicely. Uh, basically just swivels here at the wrists. You get a silver here at the waist. You get that typical Mattel two piece uh, joint here at the hip. So, you know, she does a split and uh, she can go forward a full 90 degrees, which is pretty nice if they had an ecto one to drive around then you know you could use that but there's not an ecto one sadly uh, you get syllables at both of the thighs you get bends at both of the knees and then you get bends at both of the ankles and look at that isn't that an awesome amount of movement there gotta commend mattel on that so while you don't have certain joints like a ball jointed head you don't have a ball jointed torso uh, or ball jointed knees i think that they're totally adequate they have just enough articulation for anything you might possibly need uh, for these figures so very reasonable in my view so one thing that's particularly cool about these figures is if you recall the 30th anniversary two packs that we reviewed from the original ghostbusters film came with these proton streams on the figures and uh, they're very nicely detailed they're very translucent and, uh, you know, I really like the way that these look. They look great when you display them on your figures. What's really cool is that you can attach them to the neutrino wands that come on the new Ghostbusters. Simply plug them in like that. They fit like a charm. And I do wonder if on some level that was deliberate. Maybe, maybe not. But the fact is that they do fit. And if you wanted to display your Ghostbusters with them, if you had... The 30th anniversary packs uh, you could totally do that and i just think that it's a really really nice aesthetic especially since the proton streams look pretty much the same in both films okay and that brings us to the build a figure for this wave of figures and that is rowan who is the main bad guy from the new ghostbusters film now i don't think that this particularly looks like rowan i mean it, it's generally there but he looked quite a bit different in the film this looks a lot more cartoony, in my opinion, than he actually appeared, and a lot less scary. But, eh, you know, it is what it is. Perhaps they changed the design uh, throughout the course of post-production. And, um, I mean, I think it looks okay. For a Build-A-Figure, it, it's decent enough, I suppose. Unfortunately, you can't really do a whole lot with it. It's more or less a statue, uh, because articulation is pretty limited. You can silver him at the head. You can silver him at the shoulders. You can rotate him at the wrists, uh, but the legs, you're not going to be able to do anything with those because those just snap into place and it's done. They're fixed. There's nothing you can really do with them. You can rotate the ankles, however, but that doesn't really change the position or the pose or anything. So uh, the balance is also a little bit weird because he's basically just balancing on his right foot and then the very bottom of his left heel. So it's kind of strange. 
but I guess as a build a figure sort of thing, it, it, it's okay. I mean, it, it's obviously not the greatest thing ever. And I kind of think maybe if they would have done a build a figure of Kevin, the Chris Hemsworth character, it probably would have been a little bit cooler. I would have really liked that. Whether he was in a Ghostbusters outfit or just his regular shirt and tie would have been pretty nice. But this is what we got. And I don't think it's great. I don't love it. It's just merely okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so these are the Mattel four Ghostbusters figures from the 2016 Ghostbusters film. Overall, I do think that Mattel did a pretty nice job with these figures. The likenesses are there. They may not be the absolute best likenesses, but they are quite good, particularly on Holtz. I just think that she's the best overall figure and my favorite of these four Ghostbusters figures. I do really like that the height differences are accounted for. They may not be as accurate as they are in the film. I think Patty, the Leslie Jones character, could stand to be maybe a little bit taller, but these are Mattel figures. I don't think they're going to be 100% accurate, so they did a pretty good job, and I'm glad that they at least accounted for those height differences since they are scaled relatively well one to the other. The costumes are pretty nice. There's not a whole lot of detail in the jumpsuits, but they sculpted them decently. I do like the colors though, especially the orange and the reflective silver stripes they have. The gloves are a nice touch on each of the figures. The boots look good. And the articulation is very adequate on all four of the figures. The proton packs look great. And the fact that they are detachable is a very nice touch. The Rowan build a figure that we get is a little bit of a letdown. Again, I much would have preferred a Kevin build a figure or maybe even some sort of weapon or accessory replica like they did with the Batman grapnel gun earlier this year from the DC multiverse line for Batman v Superman. Imagine if they would have done that and given us a PKE meter. How cool would that have been? It would have been awesome. In the film, each figure also had their own unique sort of weapon. I think if they would have done that here, like the wood chippers or the pistols, that would have been really great. We didn't get any of that. I'm okay with that, but extras would have been nice. If you enjoyed the 2016 Ghostbusters film, which I did, then I think you are going to enjoy adding these to your collection. They're fun figures, they look good, and they really hit the spot. I don't really feel like I need anything more fancy than what we got here. And I like them. If you're a ghost head, then I do recommend that you add these to your collection. All right, my friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, then please do give us a like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest news and updates. As always, I want to thank you for watching Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, my friends, bye-bye.